Okay, today we are talking about push-up and the biomechanics of how push-up works and when it breaks down and people get injured. So with a push-up, what I always like to see is making sure when the shoulder blade comes back and the arm comes back, you're getting full retraction. It doesn't stop at one point and then you start doing this. You've actually got to come back with the shoulder blade and retract, making sure it doesn't elevate, making sure it stays level. And as your elbow comes back into extension and the shoulder comes back into extension, you're actually going all the way back with the scapula. At the same time, when you come forward and you're pressing forward in the push-up, your shoulder blade doesn't stop there and needs to keep going. It's a normal human movement for your body when you press to push forward. What tends to happen is a lot of people will retract okay, but when they get to here, they keep that shoulder blade back. It stays in retraction and then they try and press forward. Now what that can happen is have anterior shoulder problems in the front because the scapula, when it comes forward, is not opening enough when they come forward. So if my scapula doesn't come protract and open up to allow that ball and socket to move evenly, then you start getting problems. When The other things we see is when it comes back, people don't retract enough. Okay, so they come back into here and then they don't retract enough. Maybe they're too tight in the front, maybe they're not strong enough here. Um, and when they come back into here, then they start shearing forward in the shoulder joint. So let's see that on someone we can do that. So if I go grab that for me, Aaron. If you jump down for me, we're going to show Aaron here what happens in a press. So if he is going to go into a push-up position, what can happen? If he retracts here too quickly, again, that's the same problem. So we want to make sure he's protracted at the start. And then when he comes down, he's nice and even when he bends and comes down to retraction. He needs to be in full retraction there. So he's fully retracted. And then when he presses up, he's got to make sure he actually protracts all the way through so he ends up in a protracted position, making sure he's not rounded through here. He's nice and flat. And then again, when he comes down. The other thing I want to see is making sure his hands are not too wide. So if you go wide for me, Aaron, if he goes too wide, like really wide, a lot of people try and do this to, to try and get more out of, out of their pecs in the push-up. This puts a lot of stress load through the joints. If you drop down for me, you'll find that he's struggling a little bit when he's out here. He's got far too much shear load through the joint. That's just going to run to, to load problems through that. You see him shaking there, coming back up. So if he comes in just so his arms are just a little bit wider than his shoulders, he's got a better ability to externally rotate you from the palm Externally rotating his shoulders here, which gains him a stable shoulder. So when he comes down, you go from that position, he retracts. He's got a way better power press through there. If he's forcing his shoulder joints to go into a little bit of external rotation. And the other thing too, if you're weak in your rotator cuff here, if this is a weak area, if you go into the wide again for me, Aaron. If he's weak, and this from a, from a previous injury as well, he's just generally weak in here, he's not going to be able to externally rotate in that position very well. So he's definitely going to have weakness problems here. He's going to load the front and cause further injury. All right, so making sure that those shoulders are externally rotated, making sure that you're getting enough protraction and enough retraction throughout the movement and you're doing it at the right time.